Hi Sudha, welcome to Film Companion South. Thank you, Baddy. <laughs> so, this is some kind of felicitation interview, right? We have, we've decided that you are, in a way, the director of the year because you broke a glass ceiling, like a really, really big glass ceiling in Tamil cinema, which kind of, you're not the first to do it. There was T.P. Rajalakshmi in the 30s and 40s who directed films and one with the then superstar P.U. Chinnapa. But then it became such that women directors meant they made nice and soft and friendly and, and like emotion filled films but you know not that your film doesn't have emotion but you know what I'm trying to say the woman film became a certain thing but then you shattered that notion first with Diruji Suttu to a large extent even though it was a female led film there was a macho -ness about it that was like very refreshing and now with Sura Reporter now before I ask you about anything else what are your thoughts about being called a female filmmaker insulted Completely insulted because um, who does it suit to call me in a particular category? Right. I don't know who. Is it the other uh, gentleman making films or the gentleman producing films or gentleman consuming films? I don't know. I find it extremely derogatory because nobody is giving me a handicap for making films. I make films just the way they do. So why male filmmaker, female filmmaker? I'm a director, period. Right. And uh, something that I found a little insulting if if it were uh, when i read some some pieces about uh, uh, uh Surya poetry is how everybody said oh wow bumi is such a great character bumi is of course the character played by uh, aparna balamurli because you know a woman wrote her and kind of stuff like that and i actually thought it was a reverse because you know we have had male directors writing very strong female characters shridhar k balachandar mani ratnam gautam menon who've write, written strong female characters what is actually unusual about this film, Sura Reporter, is that the reverse has never happened. We've never had women writing kick-ass, uh, uh, you know, men. It's usually like, like, you know, that was what is truly, I thought, was revolutionary about this film. Did you ever think about that, that people said, you know, I mean, of course, I'm, I'm sure you felt happy that they, they said you wrote Bomi so nicely. But did that thing bother you that they are saying that I wrote Bomi well because I'm a woman? For every woman filmmaker, I think thousand male filmmakers making the film, and if they're saying because it is a woman who's come along and who's written, but they mean it in a good way, in the sense that you know they think that somehow that sensitivity comes from a from a womanly no, place. No, I don't think so. I think it's insulting that they haven't thought to write women like that. Women are women are women are women down the ages, and I've written it in a certain way, which I think is very natural. And they haven't done it, then I think it's like. I don't think it's a compliment at all. And I do find some of the women written by some of the male directors extraordinary, exemplary, like the girl in uh, Parthiviran. Mm. I think Parthiviran is my all-time favorite. Then the characters written in Mullu Malarum. So, I mean, these are phenomenal. Yeah. And Maunaragam Revati, of course, she has a few negative shades and all that, but, 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 but she is asking those questions of those times in the 80s talking about arranged marriage right. you know so these are brilliant sensitivity by the male directors if you want to call them that why hasn't the reverse happened as much in the sense that you know when farah khan made uh, mehuna and om shanti om hmm. she literally became like the poster girl for a certain kind of woman director because literally nobody before her did those kinds of films now you're here and, and the same question comes up is like, why don't typically, I mean, I'm not saying women have to make these kinds of films. Uh, everybody makes the kind of films that they want to. But I'm saying, why do you find so few women going into this space, this hero oriented space, this what I'd like to call a macho space? Actually, this is a male centric film, but I don't know if it's something that women haven't really gone and made like uh, you take Catherine Bigelow and you, you, you take right. uh, you take even Anjali you take Nandini yeah. the male protagonists are beautiful in their films as right. well and I think um, I think it's just each one's comfort level you know and this is a male centric film because this is about Captain Gopinath yeah. it, it I the man just fascinated me and I wrote something and then the woman in his life fascinated me equally so both of them become the uh, you know protagonists right. of the film but I think it's just each to his or her own and maybe most uh, female directors haven't really gone there because nothing excited them there okay I was speaking to some people uh, and Tyagaraj and Kumar Raja, he had this to say about you from a conversation long, long back. I, I mean, he didn't even remember when. When I asked him, can I mention this? And he said, yeah, of course. So he said, when he was talking to you long, long ago, he said, 
Sudha told me that she wanted to make movies like Pera Rasul. She wants to go and teach the masses. She wants to like talk to like everybody in the in the theater. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I I I, I don't know why Pera Rasul, but then my guru. I mean, he's made films that have uh, reached. huge number of audiences and i'm a huge fan of filmmakers who are mainstream filmmakers right. and tamil cinema is such that you know the the mainstream cinema is so sensible and i am the biggest fan of tamil filmmakers all my life i've grown up watching a mahendran sir parthi raja sir mani sir sridhar so, so many of them and it excites me to be able to want to reach it doesn't really make sense like i make some cinema and then it's like just a little bit of uh, you know a few people watching it and it doesn't give me those moments so what zone are you in when you make a power kadegal episode i think power kadegal episode is or that other one the amazon i'm thinking yeah, anything amazon. that is non yeah mainstream. i think i think amazon was liked by so many people who reached out to me and they felt they felt very energized in those times and it was made for those times yeah, it was specifically yeah. made for those times i wouldn't have made it otherwise and when you come to power kadegal it touched me it it touched me as a story it it was not about one particular subject given where you it wasn't that it was like a movie right you know like if you've seen the film you don't know what's going to happen next i've i've applied every tool every learning that i've got in making films uh, into that so to me it was making a film a mini film at that, at that so everybody should see that as well and that's so, what i want so this whole what they call art film that doesn't no okay. it, it, because i'm telling you you know mani sir once told me like i remember way back way back 18 years back or something like that, after we did our first film and he wanted to kick me out and then he couldn't kick me out because i didn't want to be kicked out i wanted to stay <laughs> stay on for one more film and i was telling him like let me tell you a story and then i told him a story and he said this is really nice but knowing you this is not going to get you what you want this is not commercial sudha and you're, a, you're you love commercial so ditch it so it was about one uh, i think one young guy uh, young guy liking an older woman or some some something like that i haven't forgotten the story <laughs> he said that and i ditched it so i think it's that so what were your formative films you mentioned mahendran and all that kind of stuff but in the mainstream space in the more commercial space not even mainstream What 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 did you grow up watching? Don't you think Gulu Malram was a huge hit of that time? It is, it right? is, but today it would not be considered. Uh, it would be a very niche film. Is I, it? I, yeah, yeah. But Why? I'm talking about. Okay, let's talk about the commercial heroes, right? You you watched all those films: Kamal Rajni, Vijay yeah. Kant, yeah, you know, Satyaraj, yeah, yeah, the gamut. Yeah, yeah, Rajnikanth yeah. films. Yeah. I've loved them. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I've loved them. If I didn't see a Rajni uh, film first day first show, if my dad didn't get me tickets, he would have. he i would kill him and i was studying in this so called elitist school also at that point of time and everybody liked kamal sir but then i was this rajni fan huge <laughs> rajni fan yeah so that was your formative yeah. thing kind of yeah thing. and then no actually i loved watching those films but what made me want to get into cinema was uh, mani sir's film right. and the the absolutely when i look back and i actually think hard to see where did this spark off i think it was his film and um, pagal nilav really remember, yeah it oh. was pagal we were little kids like you know oh. going to eros theater in adyar and on mud roads going in cycles with our 5 rupees and 10 rupees that were given and then 290. i saw 290 ha huh? 290 was the price 290 i think 5 rupees <laughs> yeah. i think somehow we got the, we, we used to get the scooty samosas everything we used to get for 5 rupees and i watched pagal nilav and i just fell in love with this uh, murli and revathi story uh, murli yeah. right murli and yeah. revathi story and satyaraj sir with no wig and i thought this is something really real happening here that's yeah. all i could put my finger on and then i just started going back and watching his uh, film was uh, idhe koil before that i after think after that after that yeah. yeah that was on a vhs cassette i still remember tiri to vcd tiri to vhs i still remember oh my god i used to save save all my money for those cassettes <laughs> so uh, and then after we shifted to andhra to vizag even then i would watch only tamil films we would get them on vhs cassettes and i i'd watch nayagan and agni nakshatram and then that came in telugu it would get dubbed so but uh, you know don't don't you agree that that the telugu mainstream cinema the commercial cinema they have a very unique fantastic sensibility where they you know what really like they really believe in the ottness you know i think that's why we believe in it because they are so convinced by what they are doing i think we buy that do, do you feel that about telugu cinema the 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 olden days one 
the olden days one i wasn't such a big fan of really because I, i've grown up here so i i've only loved this cinema i don't know i've always loved this cinema but i used to watch all of the telugu films as well right. but i wasn't a fan fan this is huge fan and then with ramu i became a huge fan of telugu cinema as well i think that was the shift shiva onwards oh yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and and you saw many films like like krishna vamsi's films and uh, many other directors post that this, uh, and keshavnath sir's films always yeah. yeah when you look at your your apprenticeship period so to speak there's bala there's mani ratnam two people in the mainstream space but with different sensibilities what did you pick up from each one of them so i didn't really work with bala sir right. i was uh, only with mani sir for 6 and a half years and then i was uh, waiting to make my, uh, my i i made my own film and then i was writing irthi sutra that point of time like bala sir calls me his younger sister you know so i just visited him on a diwali day and then uh, he was like you know inda vaati na 40 naal padam panna pora i said if you are going to make a film in 40 days i'll be your first ad i'll be your anything you know so and i was just kidding by the time i reached the signal i was i was gone i was going away home and then he had called for me and he was saying come on let's do this i'll do it in 40 days so and we didn't do it in 40 days we did it in 90 days but um, i think uh, my relationship with him on that film what i learned was you know badi with uh, mani sir i've never seen him perform i've never seen him perform to artists he he elicits those performances by talking to them and i think that that's the method i use too because we don't perform but for bala sir i've seen him show every little nuance he actually shows it to them from his facial and he's a brilliant actor brilliant just brilliant so that was one second thing was the way he would relentlessly push for 25 30 takes wow yeah okay. or more or more because i still remember the first shot he had with vedika on paradesi was like she had to pull the uh, the either the rope in the well and um, he wanted her left hand to be above and the right hand to be below and that's it and each time she was getting it wrong there was something that he saw that i didn't see anybody the actor definitely didn't see and then by the 24th take you see it's sheer magic and i was going back and checking the previous takes there was sheer magic in just the way the hand moved and the way she looked perhaps you know one eye gets exposed and the okay. other eye gets exposed a little later so there was magic and then i saw him pushing um, relentlessly with mani sir i i see him um, like it's a two uh, two two takes or six takes at the maximum and you don't you know you don't get that then you don't get that that's the philosophy i've lived, lived with for the longest of time i still follow that but between the two of them this is what i saw and uh, what was exciting to me about balasa's world is uh, the rural world right that was like really exciting and very loud and um, it just resonated with me and it was so real actually did you find out why the left hand right hand thing was there did you ask him later i did ask him he's he he, he was like this felt dreamy the other one felt more purposeful like she knew what she was and oh. she was supposed to be dreamy and uh, that she's thinking about adarva in that point and uh, he wasn't telling her that he was just telling her what she needs to do to achieve that you know and uh, he told me though wow so when you are i want to take both madhavan and uh, surya right and and ritika let's say and aparna were you a mani style eliciter or were you a bala style an actor no i wouldn't act ever because uh, in fact i would uh, tell madi and surya that like you know na panna abbi ponnu panna madiri irukku don't do, don't even ask me to do it and they wouldn't actually but it's also like something that mani sir did not have uh, extensively was readings it was very extensive on my uh, pre production stages so i think we got it all there at that time and i would just elicit after that i would just talk them through the scene maximum tell them what they feeling and especially with that girl with uh, ritika she was not a she was a novice right. but then she prepped for it for 4 years she had all her lines on an ipod and she would put those music uh, she put those uh, earphones on and go to kalyan every day in the 4 hour train trip and she was only learning dialogues both in hindi and tamil so the only tamil she knows is the north chennai dialect you know the same way with this girl aparna worked on it for 6 months just on the madurai dialect so i think it's the prep and that's where i push them i tell them what i want 
and on spot they kind of uh, they living the part by the time they get through the prep they're pretty much yeah there. yeah they, i mean you, you just have to uh, i don't even tell them give me more or give me less those words are not there in our interaction in our transaction i think it's just that uh, it's not working that's all so they never ask me what do i do more i mean it's rarely more than two takes rarely because i think all our prep kind of uh, weeds out all the wrong notes right so it's just they just hitting it each time i, I think you, you do the the silent moments really well you know and i think that's one of the difficult things because there are no crutches of words or 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 you know you're pretty much reliant on the physicality factor i remember one scene where madhavan is sitting in front of the tv in urdu sutra and he pretty much have his frame covering the 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 screen and his eyes are so intense in that one scene or in uh, surya reporter you have that that brilliant scene where uh, surya is asking uh, his wife for a loan and his words get stuck in his throat because he can't uh, uh, you know he, there's some macho thing about him that makes yeah. him a little yeah. little how do you direct these silent moments is it the same way or because you're you're taking away dialogue from them to a large extent how do how do you tell them do this so you know um i I've, i've been telling surya this also and i've been uh, dreaming of this day when i would shoot with five cameras like kurusawa you know <laughs> i just l- put them there in that spot and i just tell them live that moment throughout so there are no cuts there's nothing if if it's a seven page scene they're walking through the seven page scene like they they he's actually talking to his wife and asking for money right. and that girl is like you know she's having a vadas and she's happy and she's peaceful when she realizes this man is after the money and then he has so many issues right. asking for the money so i think they have to uh, the silences have to be felt the reactions have to be felt rather than you know so so what happens is when aparna is doing her part of the scene surya is giving the cues with the same intensity though i don't have two cameras you know i don't i i, I didn't use it this time but maybe from the next film mm-hmm. and the same with that girl she would give it every time she would just be there and she would just give her cues with the entire expression same with urushi ma'am in the climax each time and it helps that it doesn't go beyond one take or two takes otherwise it would get mechanical but i think they're feeling in the silent shots they're feeling they're reacting so it's not that they're just sitting and enacting that silent bit alone it's they're following the entire thing the whole in, thing yeah, and therefore thing. this feels more organic yeah and and i tell them if you feel you have to take a pause do feel free you know just feel free and because to me uh, badi when i'm cutting i've been i mean i have never shot that way but if i did i would uh, i have seen it with certain other uh, filmmakers or directors that you know um, in certain other films rather where um, i can clearly see that he said in the dialogue learn in the dialogue in the shot yeah i don't do that i i just run masters uh, in all angles or in all ranges and um, so they just reacting that's something that i've and that works. makes it natural yeah it works for me yeah so the one of the things that many mainstream filmmakers uh, all over say is the toughest thing is to handle egos uh, uh, you know there are male stars who talk about female stars being uh, you know difficult to handle there are there are you know male stars supposed to be difficult to handle and it's not just the stars alone there's there's you know there's crew people that you have to manage uh, you know a dop might suddenly say i think this is a better idea whatever kind of a thing how is it that egos are best managed on a set when you're doing your kinds of films i just trample all over them okay. <laughs> i am not listening to anybody except uh, that i have to make my production schedule right. uh, um uh, like i said i think the the fact that i shoot five scenes or three scenes per day and then you know just just like a road roller we just have to finish it because both films i shot with budgets and i shot in a very um in a very efficient way i had to i had to both my films were like that so there was no space for all of that by the time anybody is getting into a tizzy or anybody is going to get into a sulk i'm like come now perform now get out that's how the, it would happen there no place for egos on right on a busy set clearly there are no male and female filmmakers but given kollywood and given the structure of the industry there is definitely a certain patriarchy in terms of the mindset of of like oh because there are so few filmmakers like you said one one per lakh or something like that of male filmmakers yeah. right is there finally after surya reporter and the reception a sense of having gotten a seat at the big boys table <laughs> i 
don't know. I mean, I don't know if I'm actually uh, looking for any seats at any table. No, I'm not saying you are. <laughs> but yeah. uh, having said that, see, I think, I think the fact that uh, all actors wanted to work with me post Irdi Sutra itself was a bonus. And uh, post Sudrai Potra, it's the same. Uh, somehow, I think they're comfortable that uh, despite me being a female, I don't show them in a bad light. You know, just the way uh, the women have their issues with the male filmmakers. So the male, male actors having issues with the female filmmaker, maybe I, I won't show them properly or I won't read into that uh, what a male feels like. Maybe they're comfortable with the way I'm showing the men in my film. So I think I'm, I'm like there making films with men and women and yeah, all over the place. All over. <laughs> yeah, but but are you are you saying that that you know it's like you know there is a certain upward progression that people look for? Uh, are you saying that henceforth your films not not necessarily saying, but are you saying that that I'm going to try and is there a necessity? Is there some kind of push to have you make? bigger and bigger films with bigger and bigger stars, is that what it is? is that pressure is always there because <clears throat> suddenly you have uh, huge producers coming in and offering you um, huge salaries and then uh, huge opportunities and budgets to do whatever I want from all languages actually. Right. But then it's only as much as you allow it to push you. I'm not pressured, I'm not feeling the pressure. Right. They're putting the pressure, but I'm not feeling the pressure. I'm going to do exactly what I feel like doing. If I want to do another Tangam, I'm going to do another Tangam. If I'm going to do another Irdi Sutra, so be it. Or if something like Sutra Potra comes along, great. If uh, It's just that moment I have to feel that this is what I want to say because I live with the film for more than two years. So it's, um, it's a punishment if I have to live with something for somebody else. <laughs> Seriously. Punishment, that's a strong yeah, word. It's a, yeah. Seriously, I mean like, okay, so I have to please uh, this thing and today, Sudha, if you have to, your number game has to up, then you have to work with this actor, with this budget, with this producer. No, that's not happening because I will have hell for those two years. Right. So, first, the subject has to work, I mean, has to speak to me saying, okay, I, uh, nothing runs in my head for those two years except for that. You know, for Sudha Potter, I was like literally living and breathing it for three years. And I enjoyed every moment of it. So, but then if I hadn't liked it, having put myself in that situation, I am not so uh, fast that I'll just finish up, uh, you know, under cooking a script or anything like that. I will have to be in that situation without liking the situation. And what's the whole purpose of making films? But have, I mean, you're saying the subject comes first, but surely after delivering a success, there are going to be let's say somebody from Vijay's or Ajit's side or somebody or like anybody's side, they, they just come on Nayantara being a big female superstar. She she doesn't get many good scripts, you know, she kind of, mm. I, I feel she could really use some good writing. Now, when you have, like, they say, okay, you know, I really like your film. Why don't you come in and, and, and like try and do something? Isn't there the temptation to say, wow, I really want to see if I can crack this? But there's nothing happening in my head. How will I get tempted? No, I'll be one blank thing and then I'll just be one huge failure. And, and you're, you, don't, you, never, you don't want to work on one lines that they may have? I would love to if they have something that resonates. But then I don't think they come to you with the you one line. You have to write yourself? Yeah, for the most part. And um, I rely on writers after my first one line. But now I'm looking at... You know, I'm looking at writers and if they have fantastic subjects, I'm just so wanting to work with them. But then I'm not finding anybody. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Sudha. Thank you so much. Thank that you. Was, <laughs> uh, you know, as I said before, I think what you've accomplished is something major. At least I view it that way, that, that you've shattered a glass ceiling. Uh, I hope this inspires more female filmmakers to kind of, you know, stand up and, and do the kind of films that they want. So. They are. I yeah, think yeah, they, they are, are. They are. But again, the numbers aren't there. So they because there aren't numbers coming in. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what's stopping. Um, maybe it's just the the long race. It's it's not a short sprint right. at all. And I don't know if it's for a male, female. It's the same thing because I've seen my contemporaries uh, still struggling at the same time as I have been struggling. But for the women, I see that many don't enter maybe because the long race. They can't. I interviewed Simran a few, couple of weeks ago and she had something to say which I'm, I kind of found interesting. I'm, I'm not sure whether I agree with it or not. She, so when I asked her about 
the fact that her contemporaries were still uh, uh, people who were introduced with her actors were still like top top stars whereas you know she kind of is has kind of found a different path she said you can never compare heroes and heroines because uh, a woman's biological thing is different and you know she has to stop in the middle and you know get married and have children and things like that and that takes her few years out of her life and stuff like that do you, yeah, do you think that that's yeah, for the directors as well the phys- and the physicality as well. no for the women directors see it's it's going to be rather than for her the physicality for an actor it's the physicality mm-hmm. that's going to get all messed up but for a director i think it is uh, the absence supposing you're going to have children you're going to get married and then you're relocating it's a complete uh, right. uh, you're thrown off uh, course for a few years and you're only as relevant as your last film or your last work so that's always going to be there it's not as easy as it is for men <laughs> all right so all the best for your Thank next you. film so that I, you're not going to tell us what it is but uh, you have something <laughs> cooking right maybe maybe all right <laughs> bye thank you thank you if you like this video please subscribe to film companion south